We're back. One more week, one more set of stats. Yeah. And this um, week, a crazy we one. a doozy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's kind of crazy, you know? We unfortunately don't have visibility into how Death Guard, over their four tournament players, uh, managed a 75% win rate. So that is fully unknown to us, which is disappointing. It's just a mystery. But Death Guard did do really well for anyone that's not looking at the chart. Um, those four players, 75% win rate, pretty bonkers. Um, right there with uh, Warp Coven, looks like they pretty much did the same it. thing. Yeah, we've been saying that uh, they still have some of the tools to do well. To be fair, as far as these tournaments go, they had a 3-0 in Uruguay. Or no, in Spain. One of them was in Spain, and then a 3-1 record getting third place in Uruguay. So maybe not the most developed scene as far as that 13-person tournament where they went 3-1. and one. But a 3-0 in a 10-person in Spain is probably not, not the worst. Yeah, pretty legit. Yeah, pretty legit results on both of them. So good job to those four Warp Coven players doing Zinch's plan and making the grand scheme continue on one more day. Um, I'm amused that Hunter Cadre is listed and there is no bar at all. Is that just a 0% win rate? They had an 11% win rate. So three players played them at two players at a compendium tournament and one at the same tournament where the Warp Coven player crushed it. And unsurprisingly, Compendium Tau got destroyed, got rolled. We'll see. Let me double check the roster there. You know, for those brave people still trying to make Hunter Cadre work, they do have rosters, but it does not look like I was able, I'm able to pull that up at the moment. And honestly, see. there's some silly business. You can have a drone that can just shoot anyone that has an engage order, and they don't need line of sight. It's like it can, they can shoot anywhere on the map just for some some real silly business. Some very true pot shot business. That's right. You can you Only can take. Sixes. Yeah, you got four dice on sixes, and it's four or five damage, and it's you only hit on sixes, but you can fire anywhere on the map. Is it good? No. The whole Absolutely faction, <laughs> it's, it's terrible. There is exactly one way to play it from my eye, and even then, it's still pretty bad, and still kind of hunts elites primarily, because you can just stun lock elites with five sets of photon grenades and just continually stun them and not have them charge or move very efficiently, but that's kind of all you're doing otherwise you're not really doing much yeah um but you had mentioned that that was in a compendium tournament and i just i feel like that's a little bit of insight into the death guard um assuming that at least one of those players if not both was probably in that compendium tournament nope i have no idea where the that so generally when i don't see the data it's related to team tournaments i would be very surprised if there were uh, enough team tournament games for them to have four separate players so i really don't know where the death guard is coming from and it looks suspiciously like the warp coven data but their average first loss is different so i really don't know what's going on there as far as you know factions with actual data for this week you know we had 376 players which is a little bit less than age of sigmar and substantially less than 40k we're about an eighth of the overall scene size that 40k has and i think about two-thirds of the Age of Sigmar play size this week. But Inquisitorial Agents had a really good weekend with 12 different players, 3% of the total meta, and 65% win rate. They had quite the weekend with three or five undefeated players and four of them having no ties. Wait, you said there was 12 total and five of them went undefeated? Correct. Wow. So 4-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 2-0, 1. Yeah, they've, they've kind of been one of those factions that, like, their win rate isn't always great, but, like, they're kind of one of those ones that'll just, like, pop out of the woodwork and be like, oh, by the way, we're really, really good. I think the big thing about Inquisition agents is they are a big, big skill cap team. If you are not good at the team and you are not using all of your tools, you are effectively just a bunch of seven wound guys running around with, like, average stats. So you really do need to know where to apply your melee operatives, your shooting operatives, and when to counterspell. And if you don't, like, if you're not a good control player, it's just not going to work. Like, in Magic the Gathering or any of those games where you have to play a control style, you do need to have just as good of mastery of your team as you do of your opponent's team. Because yep. you cannot just hit the cancel button on the first time a Phobos player uses a Vanguard. It's yeah. probably not correct. Well, for Phobos, maybe it is. Maybe the first time, but like, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe you want to hit now. the, 
maybe you're you know you're going to lose that first turn on their scoring anyways so you give them vanguard on turn one to force the phobos into the correct position two. and then you ax them on turn two and then they they get stuck in the awkward position and now you now you're ready to jump them right so yeah because inquisition agents is one of these teams where you need to know your side and the opponent's side fairly well you're really not going to have great average results but when the good tournament players pop up or the people who know their local meta pop up they can have very good success yeah, as we saw like this week, super yeah. duper patient you have to be like the master of scoring your secondaries you have to know exactly when to cancel it because like they're they're not really that like amazingly killy they're they're i would actually kind of put them on like the lower side of the spectrum of like teams that are good at just outright bullying people with just stat checks and and powerful guns so yeah. it really is a very very skilled team yep yep so High Fleet also had a pretty good run. They had three different players all doing pretty well. No one at a particularly large tournament, so I wouldn't really put too much stock into the win rate because it was literally three players. Phobos, however, had a very good weekend, once again showing that if you can cheat, maybe it's good. Yeah, not at all surprised about the Phobos. Uh, how many undefeateds in there? They have four undefeateds out of 12 players but one of them is a 2-0 tournament which is a kind of consistent thing we're seeing out of i think the russian region where they just have a hangout or like the eastern european block area where they have like two round tournaments where it seems like the biggest goal is just to hang out and community build as like a little competitive moose bouche so this is not the first time we've seen it and you know congrats to stanislav on phobos for taking the clean 2-0 outscoring everyone yeah pretty strong um, yeah gold mine games also... in texas had a 3-0 result this weekend with Phobos, Phobos strike team yep nice. uh second place and third place were uh, second place was chase who is friend of the pod and benjamin k someone we haven't met before but did well with pathfinders tying against chase and getting him trapped in the third place bracket who knows what would have happened if they got a fourth round it'd be i think Phobos versus mandrakes it looks like and that would have been Ooh. pretty interesting final round yeah, that would have been a spicy one for sure. Mm -hmm. Hunter Clay do pretty well this weekend. One undefeated record out of seven. Or actually, no, two undefeated records out of seven. But one of them is a 2-0 or 1-0-2. So far too many ties in that bucket for us to really call it a truly undefeated. It's not bad, but it's not the kind of undefeated you want. There was a SoCal... Or no, this is a St. Louis tournament up in Champaign, Illinois. Hunter Clay scored third, losing the final round against Dylan G's Hearthkin Salvagers, who showed up at ACO and a couple other places. Seems like he's been out on a tear, and I believe he grabbed a golden ticket at a event recently. So he'll be out at the World Championships, probably on Hearthkin Salvagers, would be my guess. The highest played team of the week was Nemesis Claw, with their 28 players. And only yep. three of them going undefeated, mostly in three round tournaments. There was a four one and one record in Argentina, but they lost the first round. So generally the scope of tournaments and kill team is if you lose the first round, the rest of your games will be a touch on the softer side for the rest of the tournament. Yeah. So you kind of catch up at the end, but but yeah, definitely. Um yeah, Nemesis Claw has definitely remained as a, a popular one and generally like swinging in the win rate but not super super huge like they're looking it like they're in a pretty healthy win rate generally yeah they haven't really spiked past the 55 percent all that often and then commandos still popular a little bit yep. under as far as win rate goes this week and then brood brothers are the next highest up with a 52 53 percent win rate it's kind of amusing so to see like that a... spike in popularity for commandos like uh maybe something changed that people know. were like, you know, maybe maybe they're good again. Yeah, I mean, out of those 25 results, three of them are, four of them are undefeated. One of them, uh, 201. So, and then the other three are three O's. So nothing too crazy. At the largest, at the largest week uh, tournament in Argentina, there were two Commandos players, both of them scoring about the, around 50-50 bracket. So... We did have one reasonably large tournament this weekend in Argentina with 26 players and six rounds. 
First place went to Mandrakes, second place to Kasserkin, the only Kasserkin player with a winning record this weekend. And then third place was Hernkin Jaeger with a 4-1-1 record. So Kasserkin remain one of those teams that you only take to tournaments if you're trying really hard. So he lost in the final round to Mandrakes. Wow. So what would the win rate be for Kasserkin this week without that? Well, they are all the way down at a 35 percent win rate so without the four wins and a tie from one pr in argentina i kind of suspect that they'd be like in the sub 15s <laughs> sub 20s yikes yikes yeah they have one two three four five six wins across uh 22 games, games then so six yeah, over 22 22 Ouch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 27% a... win rate. So one player able to hold it out in Argentina. It is especially amusing that we did have that that big spike there. Like, do any of these other ones that totally got stomped have any, like, exciting somebody pulled it off anyways, like for Hyrotech Circle or Hand of the Archon? Let's take a look. Or did they just um... thoroughly get stomped? Exaction Squad all the way down at 25%. Nothing too big. Just a, just a single 2-1. Hearth and Salvagers. Arthur and Salvagers have two undefeated records, a 4-0 and a 3-0. So Arthur and Salvagers remain one of those teams that, if you're a good pilot, there's still there's still a window of opportunity. Hernkin Jaeger did pretty well at the Argentinian tournament with a 4-1-1 record, which I think I mentioned before. A lot of two ones actually. So Hernkin Jaeger perfectly balanced at the 50% win rate, but almost all of those players really well. were some version of a two and one in the upper range. So. Not bad. Corsair yeah. Voids card, a 5-1 with a single 3-0 record. Imperial Navy Breachers, nothing of interest. Mandrakes, uh, you know, the four, the 5-1 or 5-0-1 and then a 2-0-1 and then a bunch of not great records. So Mandrakes, definitely one of those hard teams to pilot. They might be pretty well-loved right now, you know, sitting at the upper third of the overall play rate with 40 games. But definitely not as easy to play as some of these other teams. Pathfinders, oh. mostly undefeated this weekend. 3-0, 2-0-1, 2-0-1, and then the three other players have more losses than wins. And then Strike Force Justin. Yeah, doesn't seem like there's any other crazy outlier results. So it really is just Kaskin out here doing the good lord's work if you know how to do everything would be my guess specifically that one guy scout Cracking squad the being the stat check meta that everyone is talking about but maybe hasn't fully materialized across the board did have one undefeated three and oh record in vegas where they took first place Everywhere else, yeah, it seems like scout players are running into one or two matchups where they where their dice fail or, you know, you're playing against a wider team and they are able to out lethal you in time. I'm actually so, kind of much... curious if you look at a couple of those like two and ones, like if there's a, if there's any like matching or like trends for like mm -hmm. the scout killers. Let's see. So Brian D up in New York, Hardcore Comics, one of my local scenes kind of his final round was against brood brothers against uh local meta monster mike c on brood brothers crushing it so that that about matches there where i would expect that the wider teams with better tools do a little bit better against the more fair scouts as far as the other i'm looking for end boss runs so remy duran or remy d out in spain oh no france uh, he was in striking contention for the win and lost to Blooded, which, again, a wider Another team wide. that can outvalue you. Yeah, makes sense. And uh, no one else was really in striking contention this week. So the next closest would be Ryan L. in the St. Louis tournament. Taking a look at their pairings, they lost in round two. Hmm. 
losing to Pathfinders. Again, a wider team that outlethals you. So I would expect that they are a little bit too fair at 10 operatives to contend against the wider team. So Hunter Clade, Blooded, Brood Brothers, Pathfinders, and probably Veteran Guard would be my guess. Like all of these teams that outactivate them and can set the traps and force the scouting tricks to not do as much are probably going to do pretty well. Versus, you know, just teams that they out the the scouts out activate where you set the trap they walk into the trap and then you get blown the fuck up yeah yeah but yeah it's been a pretty pretty interesting week for stats felgor did pretty well this weekend their play rate has dropped off a cliff but they went 3-0 and then the rest of their records outside of the last one were all winning records. Two and one, uh, one, oh, one, and then one, oh, and three. Speaking of factions that dropped off a cliff, is uh, Chaos Cults even in here? Chaos Cults are not on the list, as usual. We're a team that literally nobody wants to play unless they're trying to win a big tournament. <laughs> Yeah, they certainly fell off hard. Um, and I'm kind of expecting, like, you know, someone might pop in and do well with them again, but uh, it still hasn't happened. Yeah. Bar Stalker had a pretty good weekend. They have one three zero record, and overall, one person did very poorly. Another guy went 1-2, and two, but the other three players all have winning records at 2-1. Two, two and for two of those players, they were in striking contention for the final round. So they were 2-1, and one, go or 2-0, oh, going into the last round. Which is pretty cool. So out in Columbia in round three, Farstalkers lost to Nemesis Claw, which is probably what I would expect. But it is definitely a matchup that you could probably figure a way out around if you really needed to. But it, I would not consider easy by any means. Yeah, Poach and is then, a really strong tool against elites. And then in Spain, they lost by one point to Inquisitorial Agents. So that is about what I would expect. That's a very close game, very hard fought game, I suspect, with a 10 to 11 as the final score. And if that includes Battle Ready, which it does not. So it is a 4 7 for primaries and then a 6 4 for secondary objectives. So Crew were able to finish off their secondaries as they normally do, but lost in the mission objectives. So. I still think Far Soccer can do it. It's just a, a team where you got to play the way Far Soccer's make you play and not the way any other team wants to play. Yeah. Talons of the Emperor continue to do pretty okay, crushing it at the Compendium Scrum, Compendium Scrum in England, where they took the 3 or the 201 record for the final win against a bunch of other people. Not surprising. I think that if I were to do a compendium game, I would probably not allow Talons just because they do seem a little bit better than everything else by a fair margin. Yeah, the ultimate stat check. <laughs> Veteran Guardsmen kind of return a little bit this week with a 47% win rate after kind of like dirtling around at the 40s for, I, th I feel like, the last couple of weeks. But yeah. Seems like a pretty cool week, and let us know in the YouTube comments or the Patreon comments if you have any questions that are burning in desire for next week's stat show, because we will be happy to answer them a little bit more proactively if you leave us questions. So, and remember to like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the comments.